get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the same right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs like the founders of Zapier, Atari, RxBar, Hint Water, and many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. This is part of the IRCE e-commerce mastery series where top experts talk about what works to boost your e-commerce business. The internet retailer conference and exhibition, better known as IRCE, helps you stay ahead of your competition by bringing in some of the top e-commerce experts and companies from around the globe including today's guest. Uh, Our sponsor today is Rise25, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. Rise25 hosts in-person VIP special events and masterminds for conferences and software companies so they can serve their highest level customers. Rise25 is a secret weapon for conferences and software companies to increase engagement, get more referrals, and build deeper relationships with their customers. Over the past year, we have hosted events in Austin, Chicago, Santa Barbara, San Diego, New York. We want to do Italy, Tommaso, at some point. And if your company sees the value of bringing your highest level customers together to connect and collaborate, learn more and find out if your community qualifies at Rise25.com. I am very excited. Today, we have the co-founder of Easy Ship, Tommaso Turbinati. I want you to pronounce it the correct Italian way, Tommaso. How do you properly pronounce your name in Italian. Hi, Jeremy. And thanks a lot for having me here. So in Italian, we say Tommaso Tamburnotti, but you said it perfectly. <laughs> he started the company with Augustine Sirak and Paul Lugan. And EasyShip is a Hong Kong-based e-commerce platform that aims to simplify logistics for small to medium-sized e-commerce sellers to help them become globally competitive. And we're going to talk about you know, how you can become how you can go global and become globally competitive. EasyShip works with more than 100 couriers and provides visibility on international shipping regulations, taxes, and duties from only one account. And they have a team of 38 people diligently working in four offices around the world, and they're used by over 15,000 businesses. Tommaso, thanks for joining me. Hi, Jeremy. Yeah, thanks a lot. You know, we have a lot to talk about going global because you know, we were talking before is that's a huge, huge missed opportunity because people are only, you know, especially in the United, we'll talk the United States, right, um, are just domestic, right? So I want to start there, but you have an amazing background of working at Rocket Internet, working at Lazada. Um, so I want to dig into, you know, your background, which led to um, Easy Ship, but talk about how can someone go global? What are some of the things that people are missing out on and they can start now where they think maybe it's intimidating? Sure. Um, so you want to start from my background or uh, start go with, to the second start part? Start with going global. Going yeah. global. All right. Yeah. So um, I think that one of, I would like to start with some data. Uh, so the first most important data is that uh, if you look at the e-commerce transaction, number of e-commerce transactions worldwide last year, uh, only 16% happen in the States. Uh, therefore, if you are um, a US brand and you're not selling internationally, you're basically missing out on 80% of the market. Mm. Um, at the same time, um, you know, this is obviously a great opportunity, but only 21% of the companies in the States ended up selling internationally last year. So it's a massive opportunity on, on the one end and Nobody, nobody is doing it on the other. Yeah. Your background's in mathematics. So Prado's principle, 80-20, this kind of seems to fall into that, right? <laughs> and talk about international-wise. If you look at the whole international piece, where should people think about focusing? Where, were that, where should their you know, 20% of their, you know, produce 80% of the results? So I think that most immediate uh, markets would be the most uh, um, mature markets like uh, Europe, Australia, um, followed by the uh, a little bit more emerging markets like uh, China, Southeast Asia, uh, Middle East, uh, and then uh, there is all the Southeast, all the South America and uh, North Africa. So let's say someone wants to go into Europe, right? 
talk about how they would use easy, easy ship and then also what other tools they'll need to, to do that. Sure. Um, so it, it, maybe let, let's start with how would you do it without easy ship to give sure. some, some comparison if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, so if you would not use easy ship, like most of the, most of our clients, the way they, they, they did before us was to, uh, so first, um, like, like jumping on the, on the shipping side directly, like jumping the, the, the market research and so on. They will have to go to the, the quarters that they usually work with, uh, in the States, asking them information about, uh, how to ship to Europe, uh, what are the delivery time, uh, most importantly, what is the shipping cost, uh, understanding whether there is any extra fees that they need to pay, uh, and then understanding whether there is any tax, uh, any taxes to pay. So BAT, uh, value added uh, like GST and uh, uh, import taxes. Um, then w- what they will do probably they will like start um, after they get some information like they will they will publish on their website some uh, shipping costs. So when uh, a visitor from France, for example, uh, finds something that they like on the catalog and they want to buy, they will they will probably check out and they will see like a static, for example, like shipping option like. Flat, flat shipping, right. express, uh, $20, uh, to Paris. And then, like, assuming that they, assuming that they cast the buyers by this order, they will, they will, uh, maybe receive an email from the merchant, like, notifying them with a tracking number. Um, or they so, may just block all international altogether because they don't want to deal with it, which is probably exactly. Pretty Exactly. So this is, I think, one of the main concern and, and like, I, I think that a lot of companies are leaving a lot of money on the table in the side because they, they kind of get a bit scared, uh, by, by selling internationally. Uh, we usually see that there are four main concerns that, um, lead to, uh, brands not selling overseas. Uh, the first one is that there are more than 400 different shipping companies in the world. So it's very hard to choose which one to use for every destination, for every kind of product. Uh, second one is that it's really hard to have a final cost. So like a full landed cost. When you will ask the courier, they will probably give you a base shipping cost, but this base shipping cost represents only, it can represent only up to 50% of the cost because there can be so many other fees like fuel to charge for international, um, um, storage fees, uh, custom uh, uh, clearance fees, and so on. So in, in your mind, you think you're paying 20, and when the when the quarter gives you the bill, you ended up paying 45. Right. And this can really neutralize your margin. Um, the third problem is that uh, it's about taxes. So every country in the world charge different taxes. So it's, yeah. it's really hard to understand for every c- country what is the tax they charge. And the fourth point is about documents. So um, basically, every country requires a different set of documents. If you don't know what are the documents that you need and you don't know how to fill it in, this may lead to probably stuck in customs forever. So, so when you look at this, um, the situation, um, ship, like shipping internationally is not simple at all. And I totally. think in general, like, a lot of companies that, that, like, forget it, I'm done. Yeah, it's a lot of pain, right? And so people, like, a lot of people are like, why should I do this? Like, at the end of the day, the state is a big market. Should I just, like, go on and just sell here and I don't have any, any headache? Uh, but at the end of the day, I think the competition in the states is increasing a lot. And now, like, I think if you listen to, like, many podcasts and so on, and, or you read blogs, the main topics is about how to increase conversion by 1% by optimizing everything. This is great, but... For me, like, I always say to my clients, why you, like, are, are working so hard to increase your conversion by 1% where you're, where you're missing out on 80% of the market? So you should probably, like, dedicate your attentions there because there is much more upside. Um, so that's why we basically built Easy Ship. We wanted to build a tool that any uh, business, regardless of their size, you don't need to be a Fortune 500 users, um, can link to their store. And, and basically handle international shipping like is like is domestic shipping. Yes, yeah, so, I mean I see the pain points that you solve, right? Which is those four things, because there's tons of shipping companies. You don't get a final cost, and with Easy Ship you do. There's these taxes, there's documentation, and there's no visibility in all those things. 
right? And it brings Correct. it into one platform. Um, talk about the early on, right? Sure. When you first created it, you know, mm -hmm. I'm sure what it looks like now is different from 2000. You know, yeah. 14. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So big, big time. what did it look like in the beginning? What were you trying to solve at that time? What were you hearing? So at the beginning, we were coming uh, together with my two co-founders. We were coming from uh, the commerce uh, um, industry, more on the sales side. So we were working on uh, um, in Lazada. That is the biggest e-commerce platform in Southeast Asia. That now has been bought by Alibaba for uh, like seven to ten billion dollars. Uh, and our job was actually to help companies in selling on our platform. So Lazada, Lazada was like Amazon. So like we were contacting third party brands to list on the platform. Mm. And I, I, I started working in Malaysia with them. And then uh, I got moved to Hong Kong to, to, to build the, the regional marketplace team. Um, and one, one thing we noticed immediately was that when you want to go internationally, uh, the main problem was shipping. So. We saw it was a biggest, it was a huge opportunity. We wanted to be the tool that helped everybody. So we, 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 we left our job and we, we started EasyShip in January 2015. Um, so we started, when we started, the, the product was, uh, was very different. Of course, as you can imagine, the, uh, it was much, we had, I think, I think when we launched in, we launched in February. So only one after one month. Um, that's quick. And, the, it was a really like basic MVP, like uh, like we we were really embarrassed about it. But that's what uh, they say. If you're not embarrassed, yeah, about that's it, what then they say exactly. Late, right? <laughs> so we, we were definitely we were definitely maybe we were a bit too early because we were really embarrassed. No, but like the tool was really ugly, uh, but it did the job. And um, we had a couple of couriers only. Uh, we were we were so now we are shipping from uh, the states, uh, Singapore, Europe, Hong Kong, and Australia. Uh, back then, we only launched in Hong Kong, and we we had like a couple of couriers. We we had no uh, information about taxes back then. We were basically mainly like focusing on uh, domestic and uh, for the international side. Mm. We 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 were basically prepared just the basic documents. Yeah. So those four things that you mentioned, those four pain points, you were kind of hitting the first one and the fourth one, the documents a little bit, and then the shipping companies. And you didn't yeah. integrate the the final cost piece and the taxes until later. Yeah, so we, we did that basically. I think after eight months. So uh, August September, we had uh, we started working on the on the taxes feature that we released in uh, in November, the MVP, uh, and then it took like more than a year and a half to make it to make it sound. Yeah. So Tommaso, I mean, you're, you're working in a very growing industry at one of the top companies um, that's also growing, why stop working there and take the risk of doing your own thing? Um, well, I think that, I mean, yeah, it was it was a very difficult choice to leave my, my job. I think I had a very good position and in general I had to, we work like like crazy just to, you know, make sure that we could have a good, a good position and a good salary. But eventually I think, um, I always wanted to open my company, uh, even like my, my family, my, my, my dad, my, my grandpa, they, they were all entrepreneurs. Mm. Uh, what and I, your, and I started, what did your dad and grandfather do? So my, my, my grandpa was, uh, uh, was a trader and, um, he was doing a bit of real estate. My, my dad as a trading company for machinery. Mm. So when I, since when I was a kid, I was following him during my summer holidays when you don't go to school. Um, and then I follow him in a couple of, uh, auctions and then overseas. Uh, so he was basically like, I think he was like the early, before e-commerce, right? He was basically like finding arbitrages in the market mm. and, and, and try to, try to take advantage of that. So you um, knew you had this, you kind of grew up seeing this, uh, you know, seeing this entrepreneurial spirit. I think so. I think he had a huge impact. I, I, I always wanted to do that. It's the reason why I also left banking is because uh, I, I felt that it was a, I mean, I learned a lot when I was, when I was in investment banking, but he, he didn't help. He, I see that he couldn't help me in, in, uh, um, improve my skills on the entrepreneurial side. Mm. So, where so did I you wanted grow to join Razada because uh, um, 
I want to join Lazala because it was like Rocket Internet is a, in the end of the day is a very good school for entrepreneurship. Yeah. Um, I, I grew up in a, in a small, uh, a very small city, uh, near Milan, uh, like 40 kilometers, the kind of city where everybody know each other, like 10,000 people. Mm. Uh, is your very, really still small there? Home. Yeah, yeah, they are. They're all there. Nice. Lazada, right? Yeah. Should more people from the States be on that platform? I feel like that's not talked about hardly at all from the e-commerce people I know. I think it's not really known because uh, Southeast Asia is uh, is growing very fast, but it's still, it's still under the radar. Mm. But I think it's definitely a platform to be in. Mm. Like when we were there, we were we were starving for uh, for American brands. Mm. It was so hard to get them. Is it hard for them to go onto that platform? Um, no, I don't think so. No. Also, because one of the best things is that they, they take care of the customer service in all the local languages. So in uh, Bahasa for Malaysia, and Indonesia, in uh, in English for Singapore, in Thai, in Thailand, in Vietnamese. So it's really like really easy. And they also do the local fulfillment. Mm. So what did you learn at Lazada that you brought to Easy Ship, working in this really big e-commerce company? So I, I think that one of the, um, one of the things that helped me the most was the fact that we were testing a lot of things. Like, uh, when you look at, uh, the, the background of people in Lazada when we started, no, there were very few people with the experience in e-commerce. We were all coming from either banking or consulting. Hmm. Uh, so we were very ignorant in, in that. I mean, at least for me, maybe uh, for sure there were people that knew much more than, than, than I did. But one thing that we, we had in common was working super hard, uh, be in general pretty aggressive uh, in a positive way, I think. Because when you, when you, know, when you come to Europe or, or the States and you go to... And you get dropped in uh, in uh, in uh, Southeast Asia where you don't speak the language, you have no idea, you don't have any network and so on. You need you need to fight your way up, right? Yeah. Uh, we were when we when we started, we were fighting like local giants that they have all the connection and so on. We arrived just <laughs> like and in the end, we 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 became the biggest one. Um. So it was like it was like working hard and and trying a lot of things. Um, I remember like one of the best thing was that when we had an idea to do in order to like uh, help our merchant to sell more, uh, increase the, the supply chain. Um, I remember that it was extremely easy to communicate to top management and say, hey, there is, I have this idea. What do you think we do this, 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 this? And as long as you present, you present it in a consulting way, like very fact-based, very organized, very next steps um, uh, approach, uh, they, they would like give it a shot. And when I mean give it a shot, I mean really quickly, like in a couple of weeks. And they were really like always like willing to, okay, let's try. Let's try. Let's uh, invest very limited. Let's do it very manually. And then if we see that it works, we double down. We invest in automations and so on. If it doesn't work, we just kill it. And we will be glad that we didn't spend time in thinking how to automate something that it would have killed. Yeah. So this was awesome. It was an amazing um is an, an, an amazing laboratory trying new idea for e-commerce. Yeah. What do you see that worked well? You know, I feel like with innovation, it often comes from outside industry. So having people who don't necessarily have e-commerce background but have mathematics, you know, and you're looking at, I think it's almost a, a positive because you are looking at the data and you don't have a preconceived notion of what may work and what won't work. You're just looking at what the data is showing. What was some of the interesting data that you saw of what was working with people selling or in that on that platform? So I think in general the the main categories um, are always uh, uh, consumer goods or so lifestyle, um, followed by uh, electronics. Electronics is massive, of course. Uh, mobiles, uh, uh, cameras, um, uh, wearables. Uh, and then uh, it was uh, uh, health and beauty. Health and beauty was a very big category. Um, I think, you know, I'm, I'm interested to hear, Tommaso, the, as far as Easy Ship, um, there's a lot of moving pieces to put together something like Easy Ship, right? I mean, you yeah. have just one thing is integration partners, mm -hmm. okay? 
So how do you build out or attract those integration partners? Is it your in-house team having to develop those integrations? Does the, the stores have to develop those integrations? How does that work? So we have uh, our internal, uh, we have a team in-house for development and uh, they focus on integration on both sides, on the courier side and on the e-commerce card side. Yeah. So we build all this by uh, all these by ourselves. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of work and a lot of maintenance as well. Yeah, because um, you know if you look at the site, there's Shopify, Amazon, Groupon, and then all these other sites. I'm curious which one is the one that is was unexpected that it was actually really popular that you had to integrate with. I mean, the Shopify and the Amazon are the obvious ones, right? Yeah. What were the ones that aren't so obvious that people were doing actually a lot of sales, so you had to build the integration, maybe you were getting requests for it? Uh, I think WooCommerce is uh, is the one that we, uh, it was not under our radar. I mean, as you said, like Shopify, Amazon, like obvious winners. Um, but WooCommerce was the was the biggest surprise, I think. Hmm. Nice. Any others internationally? Or are they all just in the U.S.? Like from around uh, the, around the globe. There are also like other international platforms. Like uh, for uh, Latin America, there is uh, uh, Lino. For uh, North Africa, there is Jumia. Uh, for uh, fashion in, uh, in South Asia, there is, there is Zalora. Um, then there are other like kind of um, local players similar to Shopify. Like, for example, there are companies like uh, Shopmatic in Southeast Asia that integrated with us natively to offer easy to all the merchants. Um, there are like, the, we have a list of like a couple of, I, I would say almost a hundred e-commerce platforms we, 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 we would like to integrate. Uh, now it's a matter of prioritization. So we are releasing like, like I would say one uh, per month. For example, the latest one we released was Weebly uh, from the States, for which we also got featured as um, as best app of the week, and they feature a couple of our videos. Uh, there are there are a lot of a lot of great platforms out there. Talk about um, GoFish Cam and what happened with them. Sure. Uh, so GoFish Cam is uh, one of our clients. Um, they are uh, a remarkable company. Uh, they started uh, out of uh, a crowdfunding campaign uh, producing this device for helping um, people to fish with. And um, they, they started fulfilling the campaign with us and they, uh, they use uh, EasyShip to ship out of the States and out of Hong Kong. And once they finish their campaign, they also ask us, okay, well, now why we want to um, open our, our store on Shopify so to, to be able to receive regular orders. So going out of the crowdfunding and actually do a, like, launch our, 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 our business. Um, and basically they were able to, at the beginning they were like, they were very interested in international e-commerce, but uh, as you can imagine, it was also, it was also a bit scary. Um, so they started out with domestic shipment, and then after they integrate our technology, and when I mean integrate our technology, I, I don't mean like coding like uh, 100 lines. I mean like clicking one button because they have like in, uh, integration with Shopify, so it takes one second. Mm. And they were able to show real. They install our plugin to show real time shipping rates and taxes at checkout. So whoever visitor in the world wanted to w- visit their website, it was they were able to buy, and they were able to buy uh, choosing. Uh, among the cheapest or the fastest or the best shipping option and a full visibility on tax and use. Mm. Uh, and I, and I think they, they, uh, I mean, I, I can't share numbers, but they, they have experienced some like impressive growth, especially on the international side. So I think for me is one of the, the best base cases, the best base cases I have because it shows how I really like you don't need to be a 500, a Fortune 500 company. Like, totally. and a, anybody can can start doing international. We're a big ambassador of the importance of going global. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. You know, with with Goldfish Cam, and I'm curious. Um, that's how they use Easy Ship, but um, a company like Method. 
do they use it the exact same way or are there different use case for, for a company like that that's, that's bigger? I think like, um, so we, we provide a lot of different approaches uh, to users because of course every company is different, every company sells different products, every company different markets. Um, so, you know, we have, we have a couple of services that have, that are more catered towards bigger companies such as, uh, the usage of, uh, um, warehouses that are integrated with us. So we don't, we don't own any warehouse. Uh, we work with partners around the globe that they can, that they can do better than us. And we focus only the technology. So what the, the biggest thing we see is like when, uh, we talk to like enterprise kind of accounts, company that do 40, 50,000 shipments a month. Uh, they, uh, also want to be able to, uh, use, um, uh, our partners, for example, in the Netherlands, uh, to be able to, uh, ship domestically in Europe, use our partners in Hong Kong and Australia to be able to ship domestically in Australia and ship all in Asia Pacific with Hong Kong. Uh, also other services that the company do that the small company cannot use is a uh, so-called direct injection. So the idea is when you have, uh, for example, uh, a lot of orders in one region, it can be either Australia or Europe or the States. Instead of shipping one order one by one, you ship it by, by, by freight. Um, and when this freight arrives in the, in the destination country, uh, all the packages inside, they get delivered, they get handed over to the local courier. So the first mile is done by freight. The last mile is done by courier. This is an option that helps them save uh, an additional 40% hmm. from an already really discounted rate. So we offer all like these really like specific services. Yeah. It's kind of like a la carte. Yeah. And then depending on the company, they can choose what they like. Yeah. So like, for example, Tomaso, like go fish cam, right? They don't have warehouses in Australia or something like that. No. Right. So what, so easy ship would help them kind of ship a batch of them to Australia. Like, do you hook them up with a specific warehouse or how does, how does that work uh, specifically in that example? I think in this in this example, like when you have when you, when you have um, like orders spread worldwide, if you if you have less than uh, let's say five hundred pounds of uh, uh, items to be shipped in one region, uh, the best way is to ship one by one because because it you is. don't have enough weight. Yeah, yeah, because you don't have enough weight to to, to leverage on these solutions. Yeah. The, these solutions are very good if you have a lot of orders to ship. Um, if you don't like do one by one, is 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 more expensive, but uh, you know it, it, it's something that you can't avoid to do. Totally. You guys have fifteen thousand businesses using it. That's that's pretty amazing. How did you get your first few though early on? Oh, the the, fir the first ones were like were like door to door. <laughs> so. We let me let me tell you like uh, our story. So when we started, we uh, we started our office in the industrial district of Hong Kong, next to the port. Um, so it's where all the e-commerce happened. Mm. So imagine imagine like maybe now is a, is a little bit changed, but probably like up to ten years ago, if you would have bought if you would have bought something on Amazon or eBay uh, about electronics or OEM, ninety percent chances it was it, it was being shipped from there. Because mm. uh, it, it, it used to be the biggest port in the world, and Hong Kong is the biggest airport in the world. Um, so we were there, and we were talking to companies that were uh, that we knew already since we, we had been uh, living in Hong Kong for some times. And uh, and then we were doing door to door. We, we were like, uh, uh, it was me, like not speaking Chinese, going door to door with like some Do you flyers. Speak Chinese? And, uh, I don't, you unfortunately. Don't? Oh. No. So you're going door to door. Picking, picking, I'm picking it up. Like I'm, I'm learning. But right. uh, yeah. So yeah, we're doing door to door, and it, it was, as you can imagine, like really frustrating because nobody them? likes. What do you to, say? You show up. What do you do? Well, we tell them like, uh, hey, uh, can we give you a free consulting on uh, how to save money in shipping? And they would probably say, no, 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 get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then uh, we were giving them and say, you know what, we, we, we can, uh, if we just like let us let us talk you for like five minutes, uh, we can give you $50 in free shipping. 
uh, so you know, worst case. And I think like, like, of course, a lot of people tell us like, get out of here, you weirdo. Uh, but like, uh, uh, other people like enough to test the product, like we're actually very interested. Um, so we got the first, the first, uh, the first clients. And then, uh, I mean, from that, from, from there, like the, we started like going little by little, uh, doing some events, uh, uh, doing some more presentation. We got lucky because we, we won, um, like three years ago, uh, the, 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 the competition in Singapore for, uh, uh, tech in Asia. That is basically the tech crunch so, of Asia. We won yeah. the best. So this gives us like some more visibility. Some credibility and uh, visibility. Yeah. 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 That I think at the beginning is, is the most important thing, right? So out of the three the ch- of you, who hated doing door to door the most? I was only me. Oh, that was just you. Yeah, because because my my so uh, Paul uh, is our our tech genius. So he's uh, he's really he, he's the mastermind behind all the work technology, and uh, and Paul uh, sorry and Augustine um, he, he managed the logistics side. So he, he was doing door to door to couriers. So everybody has his own share <laughs> to to handle. So the commercial side is on me. So uh, back then it was only me. How do you, from a mindset perspective, you know, when you go door to door, you get a lot of doors shut in your face. Um, oh yes. How do you <laughs> manage that with your mindset? Because you could be thinking, so I was working at a huge company, Lazada. I have this mathematics background, and now I am getting my door shut on my face with these shippers by the dock. So, I think I was used to it, like used in, to it. Uh, <laughs> like in, uh, in uh, when I was in Lazada in Malaysia, I was very similar. Like uh, I, I started a marketplace for them. It was the first marketplace team. Now, all, basically, ninety percent of the revenue are, are marketplace, and it was the same thing in Malaysia. So I, I was like doing cold calls, try to arrange meeting like desperate. Uh, I was basically doing lead generation. Um, before 8 a.m. and uh, after 6 p.m. so that during the during the working hours I could just like like calling nonstop. Um, so I was kind of used to that. I think that's one of the other important thing that you, that I learned in, in this kind of company is that um, you, you learn like not to give up. Like it's, it doesn't matter how many times people say say no. You need to keep going. Yeah. So you were kind of hardened from that experience. You you'd already done it a lot beforehand yeah yeah yeah, i think i think it helped so tomaso tell me um in the beginning again there's this it's a big undertaking to start something like this do you decide to bootstrap it do you have to raise money how do you navigate that piece because you also have to live yeah so we bootstrapped for the first uh, um six seven months so we didn't have any salary, uh, and we 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 actually we were good. It was good because we at least made money to pay for the rent of the office uh, and like some spare expenses. Yeah. Uh, so but you otherwise, really had we to hustle door to door. If this is this is your yeah, I think, money. I think yeah. it was the best thing. I think it was the best thing that happened to us, like because it, 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 we really are like skimming the game, right? We didn't even have a salary, so the first thing was like, okay, we need to. We need to uh, build a track record uh, to then fundraise, uh, because then when we fundraise, at least we can pay us uh, uh, a, like a minimum salary at least to to survive. Um, and and so we did that. Also, my my so uh, Paul he, he also has a family. He, he, he has a wife. He has a kid. Uh, Augustine was getting married, so I think for them it was also easier than pressure. for me. Oh, sorry, more more difficult than right, for me. Right. Totally. Yeah. 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 Uh, so after after um, seven months, we raised our first seed round, uh, and then like things started to move a little bit more. We started hiring people, um, and and this was of course like uh, like like the, the beginning because at least we could like have a bit more of structure. Was that raising that seed round easy, hard? How was that process? I think it was hard. Yeah. Like uh, I I don't know. I mean, I think it's always hard. Uh, you can always find money, but is I think is in. I mean, not always find money, but you can find money, but is is difficult to find money from the people that you want or from the people that you think you can add get something you to the, the next business. Level. Yeah. Yeah. So you, yeah. you get an influx of of money to grow the business. 
Who do you yeah. hire first? We hire tech people. More developers. More developers. Because we realized that, so we, we always wanted to build something that it's, it's like completely augmented. Um, and the better the technology is, the better I could sell it or the better marketing I can do. So it, it, we, we only hire developers. That it, it was basically like we started hiring, we started getting like seven developers. Uh, it was only me on commercial and uh, it was only Agostino in operation. Uh, it was the most important thing. So you, you're going door to door. You're hustling. You're getting customers. What point do you hit your first big customer, big milestone customer? Uh, I think it took. I think it took like uh, eight, nine months. Eight, nine months. Yeah. And um, yeah, it was. Uh, it was. It was incredible. Like the. the um, I, I, I like. It, it was really like a turning point because uh, because since then. Uh, uh, we also started getting more information around and uh, um, it, it was a big, I think it was what the team needed because, you know, at the beginning you keep working, uh, just believing that it makes sense. But if you don't get some recognition and some validation in a, in a decent time, uh, uh, you know, it's human nature to, to start like questioning uh, if you're actually doing the right thing. Right. Yeah. So, totally. yeah. So I'm very lucky because we, we had like uh, some amazing people at leadership, like really motivated, they like work around the clock and uh, when there is like some deadline or something to do, like they, they would just make it happen. Like they are extremely motivated. So now then it was door to door. Now it seems to be more speaking, more going to events where people yeah. find out about you. What conferences do you like to go to? So I think we started going to conferences really like this year because up to, for the first uh, three years, we only focused on products. We were like living in the office. Um, now this, so I think this year, so uh, CES is a conference that I like a lot, mm -hmm. uh, in Vegas. That's huge. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's incredible. It's, it's really big. Um, I think it's the biggest conference they ever held in, uh, in Vegas over the year. Um, then Shop Talk is another conference that we attended recently. Uh, I think it was really interesting, very targeted. Um, and then uh, I'm gonna we're gonna be at IRC mm -hmm. uh, next next month, and also at the uh, uh, Magento conference, Magento Imagine in Vegas. It's gonna be the 23rd, 25th of of April. Yeah. Um, then I think there are other uh, kind of conferences around the world. There is. Uh, uh, seamless in, uh, in, uh, in Singapore. Um, there is, um, uh, retail global in Australia. Yep. Um, so these are, I think, great, great places yep. to keep up to date the current trends. Yeah. Phil Leahy runs Le retail global for the running great. Yeah. Conference. I actually yeah. met him today. Oh, today in person. Yeah, I met him today at a conference. Yeah. In person at a is, conference. Is it global in, uh, sources? Yeah. I was there as a speaker. Oh, you were speaking. Okay. Did you yeah. see, um, who I know too there, uh, Chad Rubin is there. I don't know if you met him. And um, Eddie Levine. Both of them were speaking at it also. I don't know if you met them. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm full of Eddie Levine. Okay. Um, so, you know, Tommaso, Easy Ship. How did you get the domain? That does, <laughs> that, was that taken? That yeah. That does not seem like it's a, uh, oh yeah, I'm just going to search GoDaddy and it's available. Uh, no, no, we started with Go, Go Easy Ship. Go Easy Ship, okay. Yeah, and it was amazing because people for the first uh, two years and a half, they were, when we were calling them, we were like, ah, uh, oh, yeah, I'm having a meeting with Go Easy. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> that's where we realized that if we wanted to keep this name, we had to buy a domain, otherwise our branding was non existing. The people were calling Go Easy, others were calling us Easy Ship, others were calling us Go Easy Ship. So, um, and, and then like we, we bought the domain, uh, it was obviously, uh, expensive, but nothing prohibitive. Really? Uh, I think, yeah, I, yeah, I think it was like, uh, less than 15,000 US, one wow, five. Wow, I'm surprised. Yeah, I mean, since obviously there's a lot of money, but. I would say it'd be at least like $50,000. 
I think it was around that amount of money, but yeah. uh, then uh, then it went down a bit. We we, we we negotiated like you know I think already yeah, 50, I think already because. I think already what they sold it for it was already good money for them. So it wasn't hard to go down compared to what they paid for. At what point in the business do you decide to invest in something like that? How far into? Sorry. It was last year. It was no, it was year last year in uh, in August. So we waited basically for three years. Okay. Got At the it. beginning, we think it, it wasn't. I mean, it was important, but we didn't feel to spend that amount of money yeah, on a domain. Totally. Uh, then we started getting like a lot of. I mean, not a lot, but like some significant percentage of our traffic comes from organic and direct. So we said, okay, if you want to do it, you need to do it now. Totally. So we did it. What's? Yeah, I love it. Great domain. Um, what's Thank the future you. of Easy Ship? What are you working on now for the future? That's um, not top I secret. Think Ah uh, yeah, <laughs> so um, let, let, let's make it let's make it a uh, um, an inspire insider uh, uh, scoop. Uh, <laughs> so um, so we just launched Australia. Uh, actually, we 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 didn't announce it yet when we launched it like four days ago. Uh, so basically, because we start getting like a lot of uh, clients from there, and we were kind of tired of saying no, we are not there. Yeah. Uh, so we launch. Uh, yeah, and then I think the we launch we we'll working to launch Canada soon. So we start we, we're getting a lot a lot of traction from the states. Uh, a lot of companies are are, start, uh, are using us there, and more like Canadian businesses are asking for it. So given the proximity of the market is I think is a no brainer launch there. So we should expect to 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 be live there in uh, in, in a couple of months. Was there any one market? Tomazo, that was harder to, from a technology standpoint, to execute on. I think Australia was pretty complex. It was. Uh, yeah, it's really complex because it they, it works in a way that it's very different from how um, Asia or US works. Uh, like they, so it's very technical. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna maybe maybe like like be a bit boring, but. Like the, the region, um, of the, so the algorithm works in a way that we, uh, get an origin, uh, place and a destination place and then you compare all the rates. Uh, but the problem is that the region, uh, in Australia is not based on zip code, uh, or, uh, or state or city is based on, uh, on suburbs. Hmm. So, so it's a completely different to, infrastructure. Yeah. Different infrastructure. It's, it's a very amazing different how many nuances there are to all of these places. Um, oh yes, it's, it's, it's incredible. Imagine that if you, so we, we are not there, but like, imagine if you, for example, we go to Vietnam, you will see that they don't have zip codes. And, and they don't have zip codes. How do people codes. get any packages? Uh, so I don't know, so I remember when, when until, until a couple of years ago, uh, you, you would see on the addresses, like something like, I don't know, Green Street, uh, uh, actually, no, sorry, they don't have, they don't have street number. So they have the zip, they don't have street number. So you will see something like Green Street next to the <laughs> shoes uh, store that sells uh, Nike. So that's amazing. like where your hometown, Beautiful. a small hometown, just like, yeah, just in my hometown can work. That person's house. <laughs> I'll get it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, every, I mean, there are, I would say, like around seven or eight different infrastructure yeah. that you need to do. That's to not that accurate. <laughs> Drop it off next yeah, to a Nike so, store. Forget about address validation. <laughs> <I mean. laughs> um, so I always, first of all, Tommaso, thank you for taking the time. I know it's really late Hong Kong time, and I really appreciate it. Everyone should check out EasyShip.com, especially because they've acquired the domain um, from Good Negotiation. It's a great domain, easyship.com. Check them out. Um, I always ask Tommaso, because it's Inspired Insider, what has been the lowest moment and how you push through for the business? And then on the flip side, we'll talk about the, the proudest moment. What's been a low moment from this journey? Uh, I think uh, a low moment was... Um, when uh, um, we had one, uh, um, I think the, the first really like key person that left the company. 
Mm. Um, it, 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 it was really, because especially we were like in very few people, we were like 10 people the first year. And I think we weren't like, uh, we weren't ready for this. And uh, um, we started like, I remember like me with, with my with my partners, like sitting down one weekend and really thinking like, is there anything we're doing wrong? Because I think that the challenge we have ahead uh, are incredible. And if you, if you are uh, motivated, like this person at the left is, uh, I think this should be already like keep you very interested. So there has to be something else, uh, that push this person to leave. And, and, and I, and I think that it was the beginning. It, it, it was a really good, uh, turning point because what did you we stopped. So I think that in general it was, it was because we were still at a stage where everything was run by, by the three of us because you were like 10 people. So, you know, you're still very small and everything. Really. But I think that this person wanted to have some more exposure and the company was still not big enough. And not, not that now we are big, but it was not big enough to have this layer of management. Um, so what we did is that we waited a couple of months. We didn't hire just for the sake of, of having a bigger company. Uh, we waited a couple of months and once we started getting a bit more people, uh, we, we started the, the, the PM project, so the product, the, 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 the project manager, not the product manager, the project manager. So basically we identified those three people, uh, at the beginning that we want them to build, uh, mm. teams. We want them to build the foundation. Um, yeah. you kind and of I think it was really, you were going to, you were, they were going to be the foundation leadership team yeah. and that empowered them. Exactly. And I think that was really interesting because everybody saw that then it was possible, you know, to get promoted, to build, to have the chance to build a team. Because, you know, when you, when you join a startup, you join because you want to get exposure. You, you, you don't join it for anything else. If you will go to a corporate, maybe you will have a small team and with very limited decision making. So you want to go to a startup because say, I want to build my team and I want to learn about leadership and I want to, 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 to get to, to have the chance to try new stuff. So you need to give it to them. Otherwise, then it's not a, it's not a fair deal. Mm -hmm. And right? so that was a big moment that you guys had to figure out and that helped figure out kind of the, the foundational infrastructure of how you were going to build the company. Yeah. 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 So on the flip side. Yeah. What's been a proud moment? I think when we won the, the prize for best uh, company for tech in Asia, uh, the first year, uh, it was huge. Like, um, it was, it was, it was one of the happiest moments, uh, because, uh, you know, you are competing in a, in a place that is not yours. So you are, you are away from your home. You don't know anybody and you start. And I remember that we were in the final with one of the companies actually we were, uh, really looking at as one of like, Oh my God, can you believe one day we're also going to have these things like they do? And then we and then we beat them in final, so so you were then, surprised, then I mean, it sounds like. yeah, I was surprised. I was surprised. I mean, I I I, I, I was there to win. I didn't go there to to totally. to, to do for to, to go for a journey. But you know, I, I, the, the level was pretty high, so uh, I I would I would totally understand if I didn't win. Um, but but then but then it was it was a great moment. And I remember like I remember that I, I took a whole, like a terrible flight at. Um, uh, 2 a.m. from from Singapore, so that, so that I didn't have to buy a hotel, so I could like sleep mm. on the plane and be back in Hong Kong at 6 a.m. And so I remember that I went I went out uh, partying, and it was the after the after a conference. So it was it was really weird because I had I had my trophy with me, and I was going from bar to bar with my trophy, talking to people. <laughs> and actually, it, it, it was it was it was awesome. And then like straight to, and then actually I had a couple of friends from my from my uh, ex company coming over, and uh, and and then like uh, I went to Europe, and it, it, it was a really happy moment. It's you know, like, I think that in general, like for every everybody, you know, obviously not just us, like when when even now. You try 100 things and like 80 don't work. Uh, so you, you need to live for that one out of 100 that is working very well. And you need to be able to celebrate that. Otherwise, there is no point in what you're doing. Totally. Yeah. No? 
oftentimes we just don't celebrate those wins when they come. Yeah. Yeah, we do the same thing. I think like we, for example, uh, when we launched Australia, we had like some pizza at the office. We had like a bottle of wine. That's it. And then actually the next morning we're like, guys, we screw up last night. We should have like celebrated more. You know, you don't you don't open a country every day. You know, right. I mean, there's totally. been so much food behind. If you forget to celebrate, hmm. we there is no point. Yeah, yeah, I love that. It was like you carrying around the the World Cup trophy from bar to bar. Right? It's still at the yeah, and now it's at the office. Right. Next time, if you come into Hong Kong, I uh, we, we 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 see that. All right, definitely. <laughs> I want a picture with it. I want to drink beer out of it. Um, <laughs> we drink out of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tommaso, thank you so much. Everyone go to easyship.com. If you're going to any of these conferences, um, check out Easy Ship. Go up and say hello. And uh, Tommaso, thanks again. Jeremy, thanks a lot. It was uh, an amazing conversation. Yeah, likewise. Thank you very much. <laughs> let me know when you come to Hong Kong. I will. I will and, let you know when I come to New York. Well, like, I'm going to see you in Chicago. In, uh, Actually, yeah, in sure. a month and a half. There. So. Yeah, and if you pass by it. New York, let, let, let me know. You can visit our office there in Dumbo, in Brooklyn. Well, definitely. Huh? Excellent. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, like a peach if you find the same. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand.